Good morning and welcome back to the bench. This is one of those repairs that I just love to hate. And I will explain why. Um, I I'm, I'm, may have mentioned once or two thousand times I'm inundated with uh, jukebox uh, parts, boards, control boards, amplifiers, all kinds of stuff. And uh, mostly Seberg. This is an AMI or a row AMI uh, control board, which is not an amplifier, which is not my favorite thing. However, uh, I was asked to, to do a solid, a favor if you will, and, uh, and take a, a look at this and see if I can make a repair. Uh, and it's my favorite kind because I was already told what was wrong with it. It's uh, my least favorite kind because I was uh, <clears throat> I was told what was wrong with it. So uh, in this case, what we have here is a, a some some classic corrosion damage from a, a battery, uh, and this is a, a again a control board uh, from a jukebox. And uh, in this little area right here, you can see there is a area where a battery was mounted so the gentleman that owns a jukebox owns a lot of jukeboxes and uh, this is uh, somebody that he knows that owns this jukebox and uh, you can see on the back side here we've got some some corrosive damage and somebody got in here and scraped a bunch of the uh, conformal coating off and uh, it's got some big solder blobs and all that good stuff and what I was told was this this battery is the issue uh, it's caused some some corrosion so uh, let's just take a quick peek at the battery and there's part of it you can see it's broken open let's see if we can get in here and there's a lot of corrosion in there looking pretty nasty and uh, das ist kaputt uh, so there you have that and it's a 2.4 volt uh, battery with uh, 110 milliamp hours and uh, basically what he wants me to do is replace this with some uh, nickel metal hydrate batteries and uh, I've been told that there is a, a, a replacement uh, receptacle uh, possibly a, a cobbled board and all that good stuff that I, I could easily procure uh, here's, here's the problem all I would have to do is just to get something to to hold some nickel metal hydrate batteries and complete the circuit and uh, also he said he suspects this uh, capacitor right here is probably damaged and I wouldn't doubt that but uh, but that's it that's the only thing that's wrong with it I was told so here's the problem with that I don't know that that's all that's wrong with this um, let's see how how good we can get here see this uh, diode CR109 uh, that's got some corrosion on the legs which may or may not cause it to cease to function also I have these these uh, Zener diodes Zener diodes over here that are, are also exhibiting some corrosive issues so to do this the correct way I should be checking the components on this board especially uh, in this area I should be placing it in the, some type of a test fixture uh, making the repairs uh, and then uh, uh, testing it thoroughly I can't do that with this one so this is getting into some of the stuff that I did uh, uh, once upon a time which was essentially uh, here's the problem uh, there's no connectivity there's no continuity can you fix it and I can say I can do my best and I would turn it back over this is the kind of stuff that I try and stay away from at this point uh, because I know better because I know that just because uh, this is a, a common failure it doesn't mean it's the only failure and if uh, I do what I can do with it and then send it back there's a good chance it's not uh, it, there's a good chance it might not work and if that is the case uh, I'm gonna look like a uh, like a doof uh, and then the thing is I just don't have a lot of time to put into doing this the correct way so this is kind of a favor so uh, I'm, I'm going to do it the old the old way which I am not a fan of but I said I would do it um, which is basically we're just going to be cleaning this area up we're going to replace some conformal coating check these pads out we're going to remove this uh, capacitor actually we're going to remove all three of the uh, electrolytic capacitors uh, we're going to clean the board up and uh, 
and check out some of these diodes I can at least do that uh, and, and uh, increase the uh, statistical probability that it will work but it's still no it's it's by no means a good repair so I'll give you a little a uh, little warning we're not gonna have any way to make this thing work um, all we're going to be able to really do is kind of change these components and check for uh, continuity and shorts to ground, and, and that's going to be about it. So, but I'll at least show you the process as best I can. I'm going to try to edit these things together, um, show you how we test the uh, test the capacitors and how I put the conformal coating on. And uh, it's not the prettiest method in the world, but it does the job, and it's usually pretty. Uh, 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 it's 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 pretty solid repair, and and for a favor, that's a. Uh, kind of the best I can ask for. So I'm going to go ahead and get things set up and uh, we will be back shortly. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've uh, kind of got some stuff rounded up here and uh, turned all my, my equipment, which uh, I'm not going to do everything right in front of you, but I figure I'd give you a little bit of uh, solder pouring. And uh, the first thing that we're going to do is... Um, we're going we're to concentrate our repair right here. You can see that it's it's pretty pitted up, um, and a lot of this is is uh, surface pitting, but some of it looks like it's uh, it's getting fairly deep. Uh, but the first thing that we need to do is we need to get rid of the solder, uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and pull this uh, this capacitor right here. So. Okay, well, let's get to it. Okay. Now, usually with stuff like this, I just kind of work off the roll. You do whatever makes you happy. We're going to be the, uh, the Bob Ross of, uh, of solder. Uh, also, with some of this older stuff at... Um, Oh, what am I doing? My my magic lotion, my healing flux. Can never have a never have too much flux. I'm just gonna get flux pretty much all over this. It's okay. We can clean it. It will be fine. But to start off with, to to remove the old solder, and I'm assuming uh, most people uh, that are that are here know this. Uh, if you're if you're new to the sport. Uh, first thing that we're going to do is get a get get this other old solder kind of uh, acclimated to uh, to having some new solder mixed in with it which will make it uh, melt just a little bit easier um, it smells so good uh, I generally use a, a slightly a slightly lower temperature uh, when I'm uh, soldering that's a that's a really big glob. thermal mass is important very big very big glob right there there we go uh, I use a lower temperature with some of the some of the older the boards that the, the the easier it is to pull up pads and traces with the uh, No reason not to. Uh, and, and much like Bob Ross's paintings, you you really can't screw this part up. Yeah, I can't. So uh, we've got a little bit of uh, uh, new solder mixed in with the old solder, and of course now it's already kind of warm. So it, this part is going to be just a little bit easier. Uh, what I'm going to do, and it's it's difficult to do this around the camera, but uh, go ahead and use my Hakka. <laughs> That's all that solder is gone. This will be a big one. See, we're not even removing any components right now. We're just pulling off those old nasty solder balls uh, to try and uh, see what we've got going on underneath. I would normally use a little bit bigger tip, but I'm without one right now. Man, there is just... Wow. Oh, 
There's a lot going on right there, man. Well, let's see if we've got uh, some free play on this. Yeah, I. that's not something that you really ought to do, but it's my hawk. I'll do what I want. He says as he lifts a pad. Look at that. There we go. And that is at a fairly low setting. See, it's right, right there on the end of the. Uh, can't really touch that. Let's see if I can get to focus. That pad came right off. So that'll need to be glued back on. Been a minute since we did that. Let's see if we can get a little bit better look at the board. Right, uh, right there. Trying to get this to focus and it just doesn't want to. Right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this cleaned up a little bit more. We'll uh, we'll address that pad. We may have to change this. We may have to do this whole section of this trace. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup work here, and I will get right back with you. Okay. So, <clears throat> you can probably tell by the lighting that the, uh, the sun has come up, and therefore it is time for me to go to bed. But, let not your heart be troubled, we are not done. This is not the end of the video. So let me show you where we're at. Uh, where to start? So, I, uh, I removed all these slugs from these vias, and, uh, through holes and uh, I can tell uh, you can see that this is a lot uh, tinnier and, and essentially what we did was we uh, kind of went through here with some solder and, and did some uh, <laughs> uh, essentially just imagine this is one big pad we basically just threw some flux on here and tried to wick it off to see you know how much actual copper is left um, and here's the problem I can tell by the edges of this copper that this this pitting goes in places all the way through. So if I were to just uh, kind of clean this this uh, this side of the uh, the copper up, we still have acid that's eating uh, from the old batteries that, that's eating its way through the back side of the copper. So it'd just be a matter of time until this pitting just came right back and. Then you'd have the conformal coating over the top and it would just be a mess. So unfortunately, as much of a pain in the rear as this is, I'm going to have to replace this entire uh, section of trace, which is not, it's not uh, definitely doable, It's it's but it's not the first thing that I'd want to do. If, uh, if I saw some evidence that the, this wasn't going to come back, uh, I would leave it, but it's going to come back, I'm sure of it. So, just to be on the safe side, well, not even to be on the safe side, just because I know it's going to come back, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to remove this entire section of pad and uh, recoat uh, after we replace the pad uh, or, or this section of trace. We'll, uh, and that's a pretty pretty good size section. Uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, make that repair and then uh, drill our holes and uh, replace it with some conformal coating. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to have to desolder some other uh, items around here to make this area pretty flat. Uh, so I can cut out the old trace, uh, put in a new one, uh, add the conformal coating that's going to have to be pressed down. The uh, conformal coating that I use is an under layer of, uh, of an adhesive uh, epoxy. Kind of gives this some, some substrate structure uh, tension. Uh, and then some uh, CW2500 essentially is going to be the overcoat. Uh, and I'll show you how we're going to do all that. So that'll be in the next uh, segment, probably. Also, as far as component replacements go, uh, you can see we did uh, pull out the capacitor that was there. And uh, surprisingly, the capacitor is good. I uh, checked it out with the... Uh, uh, ESR meter and the capacitance meter and uh, it's, it's actually doing pretty good. 
but because it's an electrolytic and probably 35 cents uh, well it's probably a little bit more than that but uh, we've only got three electrolytics on the board and uh, to give this thing the best chance we're going to go ahead and replace these as well so these will get replaced <clears throat> Uh, we're going to take the opportunity, I'm going to have to put in a DigiKey order, or, uh, actually in this case it's going to be Mauser. Um, and we're going to take the opportunity while that's, uh, while we're waiting on that order to get in to remove all these switches and clean them up. Because uh, the contacts on these get pretty funky. Uh, a lot of times when techs go in they just, they just kind of run some deoxid through it, which, you know, that'll, it'll do the job. But if you really want to get them clean you need to desolder them from the board take them apart, uh, clean them up real good, uh, get a little fader lube in there and uh, make them work nice. So there's about four switches on here that need to be dealt with. Uh, and then, let's see, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up, but this, this, uh, this diode, this is a Zener diode, and uh, I had to do a little, little looking on the interwebs. But uh, I was able to come up with an equivalent parts list. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what it is right now. I, I found it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's like a 5.1 uh, volt, uh, 1 watt uh, Zener diode. So uh, I'll, I've got the uh, part number. I'll, I'll try and put those down in the uh, video description. In addition to that, we've got some more diodes right here that are also corroded. So those are going to need to be replaced. But I'm pretty sure I have most of these. That one's going to be a special order. So I'm going to have to order that. Uh, we've got a battery case that's going to come in, uh, and we've got some nickel hydrate uh, rechargeable batteries. We're going to get the good Panasonic ones that have the uh, the highest number of uh, milliamp milliamp hours, and uh, uh, they're obviously they're rechargeable. So, uh, f from my understanding, that this board is going to take care of the the charging. This is a uh, uh, power supply for a memory chip uh, so so that is all going to be ordered right now and what I will do is I will uh, I will pause the video I think I might uh, I'll, I'll uh, I think the next thing you're gonna see is me cleaning uh, cleaning up this area and removing this but uh, I guarantee you the lighting will not be the same because that will not happen right now this is a uh, this is what you do you know you you uh, talk to somebody about uh, some board work and they quote you a ridiculous price and you say ah, why is that so much well it's because of this because it's very time consuming and this is only uh, as they would say uh, uh, half-assing it because we don't have a way to test this the component that you need or the, the test device the jig essentially uh, runs about 80 bucks uh, I'm not gonna spend $80 to fix one board uh, I don't really work on these AMI boards, so I'll never see one of these again. I don't ever want to see one again. Um, so, uh, so $80 for, uh, for a one-time test is just, uh, you know, I would have to incorporate that into the price of the, uh, the repair. And obviously that's not gonna, that's not gonna fly. So right at, right now, just with this, we're up to about $20 worth of parts plus, uh, you know what I'm gonna have to put into it. You're talking about uh, you know, cutting out this old trace, cleaning everything up, um, you know, cleaning up all these switches, all that good stuff. You know, we got several hours into this, so that's where we're at for right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. Like I said, when I come back, uh, I think we'll be working on this uh, this trace. So, all right, see you in a minute. And through the magic of uh, the editing process, it is now the next day, and. Uh, I got in such a, uh, a hurry when I came in this morning early that uh, I, I nearly forgot to turn on the camera. So uh, mid procedure if you will, what we are in the process of doing is replacing this uh, area of trace which uh, you can see it looks as though I've drew, just decided to arbitrarily draw a marker on and that, that I can assure you that is not the case. What we are doing is uh, we have added a piece of transparent tape uh, and it would be this type of packaging tape that you could pick up at uh, your local Walmart or uh, Target if you if you like the fancy store uh, and, and essentially the trick to this is we need to transfer an image from uh, from our board which is going to 
to basically outline the area that we're going to replace. This is this is on a larger scale. Uh, normally, I, I work with much smaller components, uh, and, and the traces are generally much smaller. So I wouldn't use this marker, and I wouldn't quite use this method exactly, but it's very similar. Um, but in this case, what we want to do is make sure that the transparent tape is very flat with no wrinkles in the area that we're going to cut out because we're going to transfer this to a piece of copper plating. Uh, it's actually a 4 mil uh, copper sheet. And uh, we're going to be cutting this out. Uh, and the general rule of thumb is uh, we want to overlap the area of the old copper that we're going to keep in place. Um, generally, it's... it's it's, it's, it's more, this is more art than science. Uh, you usually want to give it quite a bit of overlap. Uh, on a straight piece, it's, it's generally about a third of, of what, uh, what you're replacing. Uh, you, want, you want to overlap the new piece uh, by about a third of its size. So I'm looking at this, and it looks like the degradation of the copper is going to be right around here, uh, where it looks like it's pretty much good on the back side at least it, it seems that way but I'm prepared to go a little bit farther so I, I'm, I think I'm gonna make a pretty cool shape uh, that uh, is essentially going to go like hmm I think we're gonna come down right about here uh, and, and hopefully this copper underneath here will be okay but I'm not going to cut this out. Uh, I'm not going to cut out my copper until I've peeled this old piece off. So if I need to, I can come back and stick this back on and I could, you know, maybe bring it over a little bit this way or, or cover up this whole section and we'll have a lot of this area to solder to. Uh, the, the larger the copper foil, the more it's going to take for heat to transfer uh, from the soldering iron. And that's what this is going to be, all be about from the soldering iron into the area that you want to solder. Uh, if you know anything about circuit board repair, um, you, you've, <laughs> uh, you, you've probably done something similar to this before. If you're, if you're new to it, uh, here's the problem. A lot of the compounds that we use to adhere our, our trace material, uh, our conductor material, to the, the substrate is... Uh, it's very expensive and uh, there are ways to get around that uh, but I will not be the one that tells you uh, this is one of those things where interestingly enough you kind of sort of have to play around and figure out what works for you what you're looking for is you're looking for a bonding material that's going to stick to the copper and it is going to stick to the substrate it is going to have high temperature resistance so that you will be able to loiter for at least long enough to solder uh, your, your joints uh, at your through holes uh, without degrading uh, seriously the, the adhesive otherwise it's just going to peel right back up then the next layer will will be the conformal coating which is going to take up the place of the, the conformal coating that's already been scratched off so that is where we're at right now and I'm not going to make you uh, uh, suffer through watching this entire painstaking process but it's literally all we're doing is just going around and I'm bringing the edge of the marker right up to where the the copper trace stops underneath the conformal coating here and and I will continue to do that all the way around the edge and then I will painstakingly cut this out <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take this uh, transparent tape I'm going to uh, uh, evenly apply it to my copper plate to make sure there's no wrinkles in it at all uh, because I don't want it to change shape and this is essentially going to be a template uh, and then we'll be able to cut our, our copper foil out. And, and in theory, it should be uh, pretty close to the same dimensions as, as what we're going to remove. And then I'm going to very gently uh, remove this uh, copper from the board. And then we'll have to clean the substrate and get it prepped uh, for our epoxy. Uh, and then there'll, there'll be a couple of different processes. But when we get all done with this, this is going to be a, a brand new trace uh, section, which will hopefully last for a long time. And once again... The reason that we're doing this is because this this oxidation that has occurred is not just it's not just taking place on this side of the foil that we're looking at. In order for the battery acid to get from the top side of the board down to the foil side, it it had to go through uh, 
areas of, of uh, um, I, I don't really want to call it a capillary action, but it had to go through areas like these vias to get down here, which means it's guaranteed that some of that acid has gone underneath of this foil. And, and if we arrest the oxidation on this side uh, by using some magic flux and some heat and some solder, that, that will pretty much stop the oxidation on this side. And this, this part wouldn't rust anymore. But the back, back side, uh, we have no way of getting any... Uh, uh, anything uh, behind it between the substrate and the the back side of the copper uh, to, to arrest that oxidation so it's just going to continue to rust until it, it comes back through again so so even if I repaired everything on this board uh, that I know is is kaput uh, this will still fail uh, in a relatively short order so if we're going to fix it we need to at least attempt to fix it right and that's how we do it we have to replace this trace it's 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 just, uh, it's it's not really an option. If we wanted to do any kind of a decent repair, we have to replace it. So that is where we are at. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the camera. I'm gonna finish this up, and then we'll show you the next part of the process. Okay, so we've started to remove the old trace material. And uh, this, is, this is kind of a good example. I wanted to, uh, again, I'm not gonna put you through the entire time consuming process but the reason that we, uh, something dawned on me uh, one might think uh, well you know why can't you just uh, you know uh, use the edge you can't just peel this thing off and just uh, use the edge of this to cut your trace well yeah in a perfect world and, and I've certainly done that before uh, but the reason that I always make the outline first is because of this it generally when you have that kind of oxidation going on it uh, <clears throat> It makes it very difficult to take it all off in one piece. So now I can promise you that this is the most heavily oxidized area uh, out of this entire piece. And you see it's still pretty well adhered to the board. Uh, and if you look over here, this, this section has been removed. And you have this nice, uh, clear uh, substrate with, with really what appears to be no damage. And if you remember, this, this section over here was pretty much untouched by any corrosion. Where this area... Uh, right here is pretty corroded uh, and you can see this uh, section has been removed but it's not that same clear color and the reason why is exactly as I said before the corrosion continued on the back side of the foil on this side see that's the back side of it right there looking pretty nasty uh, and, and that would just continue to corrode um, to, to oxidize from this side through to the other side over time uh, even though we've arrested this this would have been the the outside foil the exposed side um, even though we arrested the uh, the oxidation over there just be like the body of your car uh, you know if you you got some surface rust on the outside eh, it's no big deal but if you have rust on the inside of the fender well it's just over time if it's not addressed it's just gonna eat all the way through and uh, the same is is to be said with this this copper so the only way to make a, a, a truly lasting repair of uh, which would consider to be a, a, a permanent repair uh, is to, to get rid of all this this oxidizing copper and make sure that uh, we're in an area that um, and I'm not gonna have to, to go too much farther as a matter of fact it probably just be about to there um, and, and we should be uh, in some some relatively oxidation free copper so I'm gonna go ahead and continue to work on this uh, and then uh, uh, we'll we'll pick it up after we get to the next step. Okay, and we've gone ahead and cut out our trace and did a little bit of cleaning on it. So as you can see, it's uh, it's pretty close to lining up. It's going to do a real nice job. Uh, we're just kind of doing a dry fit right now, um, kind of going around making sure that all the edges are going to line up and that we've got a little bit of distance between our traces on the sides here. And it looks like everything's going to be fine. Just I don't know if it picks up in the camera, but there's a little bit of discoloration here. That's just from marker, and so already there's some some oxidation underneath the uh, the adhesive tape that's that's kind of blocking them. But we're going to remove that. But we still have some other uh, cleanup work to go. Also, that uh, this is backside has already been cleaned. You'll see this piece right here. Uh, there's a shiny spot on there. I did that so that you can see that's that's the uh, underneath the coating on the backside. That that this this trace this would be the back side and I've already removed that coating um, and basically just a thin blade of some sort some very gentle scraping uh, kind of does a nice job on that so 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little bit more prep work on the board. I've got some things I need to pull off uh, before I get too crazy with the soldering. And then we'll, uh, we'll get back to this. Okay, so we're just kind of going in stages, little steps here. We uh, put our piece of copper foil into the old inlay area uh, and added a couple of pieces of captain tape to uh, secure it to the board. Uh, once it was properly lined up and secured, uh, we just put a gentle roll uh, in this. Uh, don't want, you want to kind of avoid sharp creases in your foil. It's four mil, so you can kind of manhandle it a little bit, especially with a big trace like this. But uh, you know, you get smaller. You want to kind of be careful. But it, it'll take quite a uh, quite a lot of uh, bending. Uh, but you want to try and keep uh, creases out of it if you can. So I just kind of gave it a gentle roll right here to kind of pull it out of the way. Uh, made sure that we had a, a very thin, even layer of solder uh, on this bottom trace, this old trace, uh, that we were adhering to. And then once that was done, I just simply rolled it back out, held it in place, and then we ran our iron uh, all the way across to make sure we had a good, uh, tight, um, seal all the way across no gaps no wrinkles anything like that and you can see it's pretty much laid across the inlay very nicely so at this point i could probably go ahead and just take our captain tape i'm going to peel it away from the uh from the area you can see our inlay is staying right where it needs to be Put that out of the way and take this piece right here and put a little pressure on there to make sure it stays in one spot we don't want to rip anything and there we go. Now you see right away it, it rolled up a little bit and that's okay because the next step is we're going to gently roll it out of the way. So here's, here's kind of how we roll it. No creases. You want to avoid creases. You just want to give it just a little bit of a roll. Okay. Just like that. And you can see the bottom of it is kind of brushed from our, our uh, when we used an edge to clean it up. So the next process, this is already cleaned up, but we're going to go ahead and give this another uh, cleaning and we're going to get everything good and dry and then we're going to mix up some epoxy and the epoxy is going to, it just applied with a very needle, you'll see how we do it uh, and it's, it's just going to hold this to the, to the circuit board, to the PCB and then we're going to add something to hold it down and allow it to cure into place and we're going to use a little bit of heat to do that and then, and then we will add our, uh, once that's properly cured and so it, uh, finished, we will put our non-conformal coating on top. Um, and of course, we're going to add our hole. We still have some other work to do here. I've got the uh, the components are in, but I'm going to have to change out some of these components. I don't know if I mentioned or not, but this uh, this trace I was concerned with earlier about uh, the leg of the uh, capacitor. That's not actually a capacitor leg. That is the old uh, support for the old battery that actually leaked so this doesn't need to be replaced because we're going to use a whole new battery pack with uh, with AAA batteries in it so so that doesn't even need to be addressed and also one of the holes we can eliminate in this too so we'll go ahead and do that so once I get everything set up we'll be back okay so we've mixed up some epoxy and uh, this is one of the dirty little secrets of the electronics world uh, I keep my epoxies in these needles and uh, this is one of those things that doesn't seem like anybody wants to tell you what it is. Well, different strokes for different folks, but you basically have to kind of do some digging, find out what kind of substrate uh, materials will work uh, that won't be conductive. Uh, and, and these needles, uh, which are simply just for storage and easy uh, spreading, uh, this is 3M DP270. And it's made by, well, it's 3M. Uh, it's basically scotch weld and this is a this is a potting epoxy uh, which works perfectly fine for uh, repairing you know adding some uh, some adhesion for substrate uh, material to to a circuit board uh, I've made I couldn't even tell you how many repairs I've made with this I not one time have ever had it come back it, uh, one come back for having a lifted pad uh, this stuff works great you can't loiter on it with uh, heat at least a lot of heat but if you if you're soldering around uh, you know 400 degrees 
uh, something like that Fahrenheit. You're, you're, you know, the lowest temperature you can kind of get your solder to melt, and then a little bit more to make it uh, nice, uh, give it a nice flow. You shouldn't have any problem with this stuff. I certainly never have. So uh, you get on some some smaller areas, uh, little teeny tiny um, traces, uh, you know, where you don't have a whole lot of, uh, you know, large repair. This works pretty well on it, but it's, you know, you're you're applying it with a needle. Uh, we're not going to use a needle this time. We could, but we're going to use a uh, little bit of a dental tool. So, and we've already mixed it up. It's just one part and one part. We want to watch for our air bubbles. Uh, air bubbles are not your friend. They result in something that is uh, effectively porosity inside of the uh, the epoxy. And as it sets up, the uh, bubbles will either try and rise as they're being heated. They will gas off. Uh, and creating little pockets of uh, empty nothing, which they're already kind of pockets of an empty nothing there, uh, and that will weaken the uh, the substrate, so that you're you know you're trying to replace that. So this is your new substrate, and this will uh, work pretty well. Let's go ahead and move our circuit board right here. I'm not going to make you th sit through all of this, but essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to put a very thin layer of substrate. Uh, or this epoxy on our our freshly uh, freshly prepped area. I should probably mention I cleaned this multiple times. I also cleaned it with some alcohol. Uh, or I'm sorry, I cleaned it with alcohol and then added some heat to uh, to make sure that it was good and dry. Uh, the heat came from the uh, from the quick hot air station. Uh, so, and I'm not going, it might look like I'm putting this on thick, I'm really not. I'm just putting a very, very thin layer on this. Uh, and I'm keeping it, I'm not running it all the way out to the edge, because it's going to flow out to the edge. I'm getting it close, but it's not going all the way out to the edge. It is going to flow out to the edge as I put uh, pressure on it. And uh, essentially once I get this all in here, I'm going to put more capped on tape. Which, by the way, a uh, fun little fact if you didn't know. Captain, K-A-P-T-O-N, not Captain as in Captain and Tennille or Captain Kangaroo or what have you, um, but it sounds the same. That's fun. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and keep working on this um, and get this uh, strategically placed all throughout this area, and then I'll go ahead and tear it down, and we'll come back after that. Okay, so we applied all of our epoxy, and we've now got the uh, the whole area just kind of held down with the captain tape. It's uh, looking really nice so far. I'm happy with it. Uh, could have got a little closer there in a couple of spots, but we got some distance between the next trace, and everything's pretty much laid out uh, exactly where it's supposed to be. There's no rippling or bubbling going on there. It's uh, it's looking like it's gonna. Uh, it's looking. They were in pretty good shape. I know that light doesn't make it very easy. So, at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to put some weight on top of this. Uh, there's many ways to do this. Uh, I prefer to use a clamp, which I can't really get into the shot here. But uh, basically, we're going to put a flat surface right down on top of this. You can use everything from popsicle sticks glued together with the super glue. Don't use hot glue. It'll just uh, melt all over the place. Um, just as long as they're level. You can use a piece of metal. You can use, um, you know... Uh, in this case, uh, here's a, a piece of metal that would, would come in pretty handy um, if I wanted. Uh, looks like it's going to... And you have to be careful because anywhere where you have a, an uneven spot, um, you know, these solder joints that we're not going to do anything with, that would, that would move it. So essentially you would just want to put a piece of flat uh, metal, whatever. Uh, it doesn't have to be metal, just as long as it's going to hold up to heat. Uh, you're going to put that right over the top of it to hold it evenly, and then you're going to put a clamp uh, of some sort on there. At least that's what I what I tend to, intend to do. Uh, and you don't have to clamp it down really, really tight. You don't want to do any damage to the board. You want to use some spacers of some sort to kind of, you know, minimize any rubbing on, especially on the other side, which that's, I have some felt that I can stick in there and some other things I can use. Uh, but essentially, we're just going to hold this in one spot, and then we're going to uh, uh, add heat. Uh, and again, different epoxies will do different things. Sometimes you don't want to use heat. You need, you need to know what epoxy you're going to use, which is why I'm not going to make it about this. this. I told you what I'm using, and with this, generally about 35 minutes, 
something like that, roughly, uh, at about 200, a little over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, everything's just fine, but you also have to be careful what you're going to leave back on the board. Uh, if you have any uh, capacitors with heat shrink tube, uh, you know, think about that. If it's a, you know, if it's a capacitor that's not going to hold up to the heat, you don't want to leave it on there. If it's a, a, a certain plastics that, that may be on the board that might not, um, you know, substan but you know, 200 degrees Fahrenheit is a fair, is a relatively low temperature, um, but but uh, you do need to take care that you're not going to leave anything in there that's going to uh, be destroyed by that heat during the cure process. So I'll go ahead and do that, and we'll move on to the next step. So at this point, our board is cured. Uh, it's gone through the oven process, cooled back down to room temperature, and we've removed our uh, captain tape and everything is staying on there nice and tight uh, it doesn't appear to be any wrinkles or voids any places where i can press down and actually just move the foil so that means it's adhered to the board well so now what we're going to do is we're going to test for continuity which this is a pretty big piece i don't think we're going to have any problems here but we follow this trace right here uh, it comes back up around and goes to these two component legs so if i just put a probe here and possibly one there there we go good continuity on both uh, let's see and yeah, we've got continuity all the way through it, so so that's good. So we're all set to uh, start with our conformal coat and create our RVs and solder pads. Okay, so everything's been kind of prepped. Sorry about the shaky cans. Get this just a little bit. And uh, we're not going to go too much into detail. This is our uh, two-part conformal coating. Get some shadows going on there. Part, and there's two parts and just like the other epoxy this is a this is CW 2500 um, we're going to mix this together and we're going to place this on the board the other thing that we're going to do uh, is we're just going to add <clears throat> sprites mentioned you can also use a uh, use something like this which is just a this is just your conformal coating but it's it's, it's UV light activated so uh, pretty cheap, you can get them pretty much anywhere, but you have to have a UV light source, you have to have some acetate sheets, you need to block out the areas where you're going to uh, put your, uh, <clears throat> your solder pads, and in this case, I just don't think that everybody is going to have that sitting around. Of course, you're probably not going to have the CW2500 sitting around, so if you're trying to do a basic repair, uh, you know, be prepared to spend quite a bit of money on that CW2500, it's not cheap. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw some uh, some pads, essentially, just the outline of the pads, around the areas that I've already marked for uh, not exactly an artiste, uh, just for the areas where I don't want the conformal coat. And I'm going to do all of those holes. Well, I don't think I need one of those. I'll flip it over and double check it. Uh, and then I will mix up my epoxy and I'm just going to give it a light coat all over the entire thing. Now you, you can play around with this stuff. A little pricey to be playing around with, but essentially if you just cover everything, it's not going to be an even, uh, very even coat when it cures. Uh, keep in mind for best results, uh, you can let this cure and you get kind of a rubbery uh, epoxy. Just let it sit out in the open and it will cure like that. Or you can bake it at some temperature, about 200 and some degrees. Check local listings. See what works for you. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, for about 35, 45 minutes. And once again, you're not really going to do much damage with that because, um, you know, most of these components will take well over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So, uh, And you get more of a glassy, plasticky kind of surface. So uh, that is not what I wanted to stir this with. But uh, let me give you a good, good idea. Of what we're going to be doing. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing, but essentially, we're just going to take it a little bit of time. Eh, it's not quite mixed enough yet. I usually spend, you know, a minute or so mixing this stuff up. And this ought to do it. So, you're essentially just going to go over and you're going to cover the entire area that is bare. And you need, if you're especially if you're going to bake it, this is going to have a little bit of contraction across the top of the surface. So, you want to go a little bit past it. Uh, I go quite a bit past it because it's not going to hurt it getting on the old conformal coating, but we definitely want to make sure that this is completely covered so that it's uh, it's insulated, and that is that is essentially it. 
So when we get done, we will have this as spread as evenly as we can, not going too crazy, uh, covering the entire uh, copper, exposed copper area. And, you know, we'll also hit areas like this where the trace neighboring has just had some stuff. You know, you just want to hit all those things. Again, doesn't have to be that pretty, but it's going to be a lot more solid of a repair than what, uh, what we previously thought we were, might be able to get away with. But that's okay. This is going to make for a pretty good video. It's got nice wide traces, so I don't have to worry about using a USB microscope to show you exactly what gets done. But that's essentially all we're going to do. We're just going to mix the CW2500. We're going to apply it as evenly as possible and cover as many uh, bare copper areas obviously except for the places where we're going to need to do some soldering and you can always go back when you're done and scratch some of the overcoat off if you need to to make a little bit better solder pad but um, again the better way in my opinion is to use the UV light uh, UV light activated ink but uh, not widely available to a lot of people so uh, if, if you must you can always do this too and then there's also uh, I think there's a uh, there's a couple of pins that they sell out there that you can just give a light coat with and those work I guess pretty good I've never never actually used one I've seen them used uh, I've always used this kind of stuff so but okay I'm gonna go ahead and get to this and then hopefully when we get back we'll be uh, we'll have this thing all cured up so. okay so just we're getting a little long here so I'm gonna try and make this quick uh, our conformal coating has been applied. We've uh, heated it with a uh, stationary. We just went ahead and isolated this area. It's a little bit too big to oven. Uh, and also there were some other things that I didn't want to risk damaging. So I just said, well, we're, we're going to isolate it. So we used a wand, uh, a stationary wand, uh, uh, a hot air station wand, to just put direct heat on this. Um, cured it. And we are now electrically electrically insulated as well as uh, insulating it the foil from oxygen so it shouldn't ever corrode uh, as long as we don't have another battery uh, incident uh, our traces have been or, or excuse me our solder pad through holes through holes have been exposed and cleaned up and they're all ready to accept the new component legs and they should take solder just fine and we tested for continuity and everything was good so now we just have to work on our component replacement as that other portion of the repair is done we have uh, an electrolytic, uh, a, a diode, which is these. These have already. I, I have these in stock. This this was ordered and it's in. And I have three diodes over here that I want to replace. And I also have this jumper. Normally I wouldn't really worry too much about the jumper, but you know it's uh, it's just a little bit more corroded than I want to. I don't want to leave it in there if I don't need to. If I have one, and I do, these are easy. It, as a matter of fact, if you can't, if you don't have one of these, a lot of times you can use a, a component leg. You know, from something that you've already cut off, as long as it's thick enough, uh, that it will uh, carry any voltages required. Uh, it's no brains, no headaches. You just make it the right size and bend it and uh, stick it in there and solder it in place. So, uh, let's see. Switches. So, at the beginning, I mentioned the switches. And we have uh, several switches that were taken off because uh, I take these kind of things off so I can clean them. Usually while I'm doing the other work, but I ran into some other things and I had to address that. These are, uh, these are just a two position switch. Uh, it, very common. Uh, I'm going to make a separate video on how to clean these, um, which I'll probably put up before this video goes up. Uh, there were three of these types of switches. They're very bulletproof. You can clean them up and put them back into service no problem. Uh, I've never had one that I, I don't ever recall having one with the exception of a leg being burnt off or something uh, or breaking where I had to replace the actual switch uh, every other time you just clean them up you put them right back into service but well, you can see that kind of black inky stuff right here in the center I'm not sure if it's going to show up in the camera and you get that on these contacts that are on the inside which are uh, right inside there there's a series of them and there's another contact on top and they just get tarnished and you just need to clean that up a little bit of deoxid elbow grease goes right back into service. They're pretty bulletproof, so no sense in replacing. But we had three of those. We had another one, exact same style. It just has more positions. It's a five position, a four position. So it's a four position switch. We'll clean that up and put it back in. Then we get to our tactile switches. And these are momentary tactile switches. They've been around for a while. And they're very cheap. Um, I took them off, tested them, and... Uh, 
three of them worked. One of them, uh, what, one of the three that worked was intermittent. Uh, it, it seemed to have a little bit of a problem, but not too horrible. But this number three is just kaput. It uh, looks like it got some heat in it at some point in time. It's a little bit oblong. And uh, I'm not sure if that was a current issue. It's, a, it's wiggling around inside of the uh, inside of the housing okay. Uh, but it just doesn't feel like maybe there's just some corrosion in there. But like I said, with the way that it's kind of oblong, it kind of looks like it got some heat. But it doesn't really matter what caused it. It definitely failed. Uh, and these things are really cheap. So we're just going to replace all four of them. I'm sure I have a bag of new ones. And I think those are 12 millimeter by... 12 millimeter by 12, well, 5 millimeters high, 12 millimeters squared, so um, I'm sure I have those, and if not, I can have them in, in a couple of days. So, with that being said, I'm going to make a video about cleaning these, uh, but uh, separate, and then I will, will repopulate this board with what I have, and we'll do some basic testing, and we'll start with putting our, our battery pack, well, that'll be the last thing that goes on, but uh, we'll have our battery even pack installed, uh, and then we can we can test it as best as possible. So I will see you shortly. Okay, so at this point we're going to call this this board done. Uh, it's as good it's it's as done as I can done it. Uh, essentially, let's just we'll recap and show everything that we did um, very uh, as quick as possible. All the header pins on. It, it, on every connection uh, on the back side of the board, we've re-soldered, touched them up to make sure that they're electrically sound. Uh, we added this battery component. This is to provide memory to an onboard chip. So we added the holder and two nickel hydrate batteries. I've got some paper in there uh, tucked in on each side of the uh, uh, the positive ends of the, uh, <coughs> oh, I should say the anode into the batteries to uh, uh, make sure that there's no uh, electricity discharge until he's ready to put it in. He can just pull those tabs out. Uh, we replaced uh, uh, one of these diodes, uh, this this diode right here, I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, that diode was completely corroded and fallen apart. That had to be replaced. The electrolytic capacitor actually miraculously didn't get corroded, so it's fine. Uh, <clears throat> and the rest of these components, the corrosion didn't touch it, so I, we went through with a component tester and tested everything on the board. Um, and everything that I tested was okay. Now, of course, there's a few things on here I can't, you know, uh, really tell you if there's anything going on with it or not, but uh, because we can't put any power to it. We have no schematics. We have no voltages listed. Uh, you know, you'd be a, it'd be kind of a fool there to try and put any power to this. Uh, we have this group of switching diodes. And all five of these things were uh, damaged with corrosion, so uh, those were replaced. Uh, we also have uh, two jumpers, uh, these two right here, that were damaged with corrosion, so those were both replaced. Um, as far as our switches go, we had four momentary tactile switches, and all four of those have been replaced. The other two electrolytics, all three of the electrolytics tested okay. So I will probably, I have some extras, I, I will put some new ones in the bag. The gentleman that owns this board, I believe... This is a favor of a favor of a, of a friend of a friend. Uh, I think he's, uh, okay. I think he's capable of changing out the, the electrolytics. The only reason it showed up here was because of the trace damage on the back. Um, so all these switches have been cleaned. Uh, a couple of them were really, really, really filthy black, nasty, inky with tarnish on the on the uh, connections. So all of that was, uh, all those were cleaned up. Uh, they're nice and shiny and new on the inside and electrically sound. They work just fine. Uh, we cleaned up a lot of somebody else's flux on here. I didn't go too crazy because, you know, I didn't, I'm not, uh, something like that there. Uh, it just, it, it, I just don't like seeing flux on the board. Um, so on the back side, and then of course this is where we had our repair. Um, once again, could we have done a better job on it? Sure. But, you know, we already have quite a bit of time in this, and this is more of a favor than anything else. So nothing will be made or lost on this, so... <clears throat> So that is exactly where we're at. So it's not exactly the best uh, repair video in the world because it's uh, not going to show that you don't get the satisfaction of seeing the darn thing work. But uh, as far as uh, showing what what is involved in doing a trace repair like that, um, I think it I think it did an adequate job. Especially considering I think we're getting ready to push somewhere around an hour by the time this thing is all edited together. <clears throat> I, I I don't know who would have the patience to 
supposed to do all that. So, anyway, uh, I hope you found it informative. Uh, I hope, uh, you know, if you, if you do need to make one of these kind of repairs, uh, this is one way of doing it. There's some other ways that involve, uh, I've seen people use wick, uh, solder wick. Um, where they pretty much just soldered it over the place, you know, cut out the corroded area and then they just soldered it across and uh, did the best they could drilling some holes for uh, for their component legs to fix, replace the components, and sure that that'll work. Um, but obviously care needs to be taken to make sure you're not uh, making any improper electrical connections. Um, <clears throat> and again, I would consider that to be a bodge job or a temporary repair. Uh, what we have here is kind of a hybrid. I mean, for the most part, it's electrically sound. But the only thing that I would do different on a regular repair would be to use the uh, conformal uh, mask on the back, uh, on the uh, foil side. I, I would probably go with a, a, a UV type, either either liquid or, or the uh, adhesive, uh, where you just you know, simply peel in place and then hit it with the UV light with a, uh, a template to... You know, keep the keep the mask from adhering to the places where you need to maintain uh, solder pad areas. So, with that being said, we're going to call this one done. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, um, and I appreciate the uh, all the subscriptions and the uh, the likes and junk. So, uh, you guys have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next one.